Are you ready for a chaotic video? All right, great, me too. Let's get going. Kinsey, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for being here. Today, I am picking a book to read. I just finished Gods of Jade and Shadow and boy did that tear my heart out, spit on it, and put it back in my chest. Ah! <laughs> Love this book. Love this book. But we're done with that book. So I need another book to read and I decided to take you guys along on the journey with me. I was inspired by the book Leo. She did a video similar to this and I thought it was interesting to watch her process for picking out a book. I thought it would be fun to bring you guys into my process of picking out a book because I kind of do it a little bit differently. I did enjoy her video so if you want to go look at it, link down below, of course. Uh, so let's, let's get into my books, okay? First thing I do, oh my god, hello sunshine! First thing I do when I pick a book is I figure out, okay, what is the mood of the month that I've already decided? So since March's mood of the month is life is too short, enjoy it, it's kind of the easiest month for me to show you how I'm I go about my process of picking a new book with my mood reading. So March is kind of a freebie month for me where I can just read whatever I want, however I feel. Mainly the idea behind this mood for this month was expanding on page numbers, reading more, reading consistently really. So what I'm looking for is a book that I'm going to stay engaged with and want to read a lot of. It wouldn't hurt if it had a a lot of pages because that's really what I'm after. However, I just really want to read a book that I enjoy and that's not going to put me into a slump. I feel like I got a little slumpy there in February, so let's not do that again. All right, so let me just bring you a little bit closer. So let's see. This is my problematic shelf, okay? So we have my Harry Potter collection in there. We have the Twilight collection back there. We have the Discovery of Witches collection, which I did not enjoy. That's here. Uh, we have the Poppy War series here, mainly because I didn't like the ending. So... It's not exactly as problematic as the other ones, but like A Discovery of Witches, I just really, I just really wasn't a fan. The only book on this shelf that we haven't read is Breast and Eggs. Moving on. This is my next shelf. This is the Ryordan shelf and his Ryordan Presents. I also have Cassandra Clare here. I am, I ordered some editions of the uh, Infernal Devices, so I'm waiting for that to come in, and then I'll reread this entire series. I did just finish this series, so I'm a little, I don't want to read this one right now, because honestly, Percy, he was a little irritating, that boy. All right, so this shelf is my favorite shelf, so nothing to read here. This shelf has a lot of to-read. I think this entire shelf is a to-read shelf. So let's see, we've got some... Let's pull these down. Patrick Rothfuss, but that's a series. Little fires when no one is watching. I could do a series. A series would guarantee me reading a lot of pages. I do have some horror in there I'm looking at, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm worried. I'm not worried about the horror. Like I won't like it. It's just, I want to have horror to read in October. And if I'm not reading, if I'm not buying any more books this year, I got to space them out. Right? We have the giver, which I did love, but it's a little, I don't want it to feel like academic reading. So what else we got? We got Crescent City. 
I think all of these are part of a series, and that's why I put them over here. These are incomplete, and these are horror, and some sci-fi. So I mean, it's hard. It's hard. Do I read them now? Do I read them later? I feel like I want to read them later. Especially those series that I don't have the rest of. Alright. Moving down. We have my manga and graphic novel shelf. I don't think... I've read everything on this shelf. So there's nothing to read here. I don't think I finished that One Punch Man manga. But like, I don't have the rest. What am I gonna do without the rest? Last shelf, what do we got? I've read those three in the center and that stack off to the right. That just leaves me with this stack. I have Edgar Allan Poe, some Welcome to Night Vale. Didn't I read that one? Sorry, y'all. I had to move Welcome to Night Vale because I've already read that book. So, we have Lolita, which I'm not really... I read half of it once, and I don't know if I want to read the rest of it. Pride and Prejudice, I definitely want to read. I definitely want to read all of these that are right here, just not right now. Not right now! I really want to read more mythology. I really do. But also part of me wants to have, like, a feminist <laughs> mythology, or at least something to make it seem like the females weren't the entire issue. I don't know. Next, we have all the books that I just bought, and we just did a video of them. Part of me wants to read the Cruel Prince series. Part of me wants to read the Six of Crows series. If I read the Six of Crows series, that's a lot of books. It's a lot of pages. Let's see what else we got here. These were some of the books that I thought I might want to read. House in the Cerulean Sea, Stephen King. Beach Read I really wanted to read, but I don't know if I want to read that right now, you know? I feel like I'm just convincing myself to start with Shadow and Bone. Ugh, the second one is coming out. I'm so excited. I didn't even know there was a second one, but now that I know that there's a second one, like, oh my god, I want to read it. But if I, if I read it, then I'll want the second one, and I can't buy the second one. Moving on. We do have a Finnish duology here. That could be interesting. All right. Dracul, Ninth House, another Lee Bardugo. Cemetery Boys, I've been thinking about. Also, all of these Tana French. But they're kind of mystery. How am I supposed to read this trilogy? Which one goes first? Do I read this one first or Six of Crows first? How do I know? Part of me wants to read the Shadow and Bone series, but I'm not sure where to start. Do I start Do I start with Shadow and Bone or do I start with Six of Crows? We just don't know. All right, that'll be something that I look up in a second. Um, I don't want to read a romance right now. Is that bad of me? I read two strict romances, and I really only liked one. So my fear with the romance is that I'm just not going to like it, you guys. I'm worried. And I'm worried more that I'm going to read it, and it's going to put me in a slump. It's the last thing I want to do is be slumpy. A lot of romances back there. What else do I have back here? What if it's us? That's a romance. Priory of the Orange Tree has female female romance, but it's also <laughs> it's huge. Also, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure Samantha Shannon hinted at Prior of an Orange of the of the Orange Tree. Prior of the Orange Tree. I'm pretty sure she hinted at the fact that it's gonna have a sequel, 
or there's going to be another book in the universe. All right. So what I'm thinking at this point is I'm thinking, obviously we're probably going to do a fantasy because that's all I've picked up right now. I'm thinking either Priory of the Orange Tree, maybe Six of Crows, or the other one, because I don't know which one's supposed to come first. Um, I know this is also Lee Bardugo, but like, Pureness is pretty short. It's so beautiful. My edition of Cemetery Boys is gorgeous, and you just, you can't, like, come for me. This is beautiful. Are you freaking kidding me? Gorgeous. Um. And now he can't get rid of him. <sighs> Cemetery Boys? Ninth House? What are you about, Ninth House? That was a little bit of a mission to get this out of there. Oh, Stephen King. Ninth House is the best fantasy novel I've read in years because it's about real people. Stephen King, shut up. <laughs> that seemed interesting. Hey, this is Dark Academia, girlfriend. Okay. Something about these two books screams April to me, and I feel like April's theme is going to be death and or skulls and or darkness. So we'll save these for April, I think. See, this is what I do. This is part of my process. Part of the process is trying to define which books work in which time, right? So like mysteries, thrillers, that's gonna be in fall. That's what I'm gonna want in fall. April will probably be focused on books like these ones. Why do I decide that? How does that happen? The only worry with starting this, these, this, Grisha? Grisha. Help. <laughs> the only problem with this is if once I finish Shadow and Bone or once I finish Six of Crows, it's a series. I have to keep going. And that's always been my issue with series too, is like, am I in the mood to read thousands of pages about the same characters or do I want to read thousands of pages about different characters and different storylines? Do you know what I'm saying? Do I want to read one big fantasy or a bunch of little fantasies? Okay, I think the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna figure out the order in which to read these. So BRB. All right, Friends of the Valley. It looks like I saw some recommendations to read Six of Crows first because a lot of people feel like it is the most or the more entertaining one. However, if you read Six of Crows first, you'll miss out on some like Easter eggs and like you get, what's it called, spoilers for this trilogy. So I'm just going to start with Shadow and Bone and then I'll move on to Six of Crows and King of Scars. Is that what I'm reading? Did I just choose what to read? Here's the map. Look at how cute this map is! What I really like, okay, so we saw that large version of the... The map in King of Scars is huge. Much bigger than this one. Much more detailed. It looks like this map is this area right here. How cute is that? I love when books do that! That's almost like my favorite thing in the whole world. Okay. Next, now that I'm pretty sure I want to read this, I'm just going to... I'm just gonna read the first page, see if I like it, see if we're interested. And if we're not, we'll look at something else. But I think it's cute. Let's find out, okay. Oh! <laughs> Sold. And you know, we didn't even, we didn't even make that much of a mess. Okay, all right, that was exciting. This was pretty quick. I thought this would be a little bit harder for me to do. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. This was fun. You got to see a little bit more of my bookshelf and what I do back there. You got to see this mess and nonsense. And, you know, we got to do a little experiment about how I pick books. So I figure out the mood. I think about what books I want to save for later or a different time frame. 
and then I see what's left and what I'm in the mood for. And I guess it's fantasy and I guess it's time for this. I really, it's funny because I really was just planning on waiting for the show and seeing how everyone feels about it and then getting into it. So I really wasn't going to prioritize this, but I feel like I'm ready. I'm in the mood. I'm looking for something, you know? Okay, exciting. Here we go. Now you know what I'm going to read. That's uh, probably exciting for you because most of the time you know nothing about what I'm going to read because I'm a huge mood reader. So thank you for joining me on this video of trying to figure out what I read next. I hope you enjoyed the look at my bookshelf. Definitely visit the description box so you can visit the book Leo's channel and watch her video because that was also interesting. And I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye!